Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for uh, taking part in this very important meeting this morning about the human rights situation in Iran and the appalling conditions facing the members of the Iranian opposition in Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty. In recent days, Mr. Kobla has been uh, pressuring the remaining 100 residents at Camp Ashraf to move to Camp Liberty and give up their property rights in violation of international law so it could all be confiscated by the Iraqi government. I find the actions of Mr. Kobla outrageous and I hope our government will make the point to the United Nations Secretary General that he ought to personally intervene to repay Mr. Kobla and ensure that the rights of the residents under international law are recognised. One immediate consequence of Kobler's failure is the fact that his actions are making the UK and the European Union lose credibility at this. So I want to urge my coalition government to condition diplomatic relations with this regime to stopping executions and torture and to refer the Mullah's terrifying human rights dossier to the United Nations Security Council. Secondly, to call on the UNHCR to give Camp Liberty the status of a refugee camp or else allow the resistance to return to Camp Ashraf. And finally, to recognize the Iranian resistance NCRI and the PMOI as the force for bringing about democratic change in Iran. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have, before calling on Lord Carlyle to speak, I have a message from Madame Rajavi to read out. Um, this is Mrs. Rajavi's own words. Mr. Chairman, honourable parliamentarians and dear friends, the most important task for the Mullahs following the 2009 and 2011 uprisings was to perpetrate a bloody attack on Ashraf. Their answer to the growing popular discontent is to attack their organised resistance. Once again, as the situation has turned more critical, the Mullahs are exerting the most pressures on Ashraf and liberty, including denial of freedoms, a medical siege, and conspiring to plunder their property. It is clear that as the crisis grows, the danger of its conspiracies against members of the resistance will grow. We respect the international community to make the continuation of relations with this regime contingent to a halt to all executions and tortures. Secondly, refer the ruling Mullah's track record of grave violations of human rights to the UN Security Council. Provide security and protection to Camp Liberty and ask the United Nations to recognize this camp as a refugee camp and respect the right of Ashraf residents to ownership and selling their property. Uh, finally, to recognize the Iranian resistance for change in Iran. Once again, I wish you success in your efforts. And the third thing, which is an aspiration of mine as a lawyer, is that in due course we should bring to justice those, whether they're in Iran or Iraq or elsewhere, who have been in breach of international humanitarian law in relation to Iranian citizens, whoever they are, whichever group they belong to. And I You know, in Iran, we see a rise in public hangings and torture and the execution of prisoners on bogus and unsubstantiated charges. And in spite of the United Nations condemning the persecutions and the brutalization in Iran, which I believe they have done on some over 50 occasions, that same United Nations has failed to come forward with a clear plan to stop the genocide in that country. I'm sure you and, and I do recall today the year of 1988 when the Ayatollah Khomeini was forced to accept the ceasefire in the Iran-Iraq war. That summer thousands of prisoners 
innocent men, women and children were murdered in a few weeks based on Hominy's fatwa. It was the greatest crime against humanity since the Second World War and it has gone unpunished. But as Lord Carlyle said, the day will come where we shall see it put right. So, Mr. Chairman and my friends, I use this platform today to call for justice to be done to the perpetrators of genocide who are still in power in Iran. And we call on the United Nations to examine the findings of the recent tribunal in The Hague. Prominent judges and prosecutors dealt with this issue and their findings are gruesome and that needs to be examined. We think it's about time the governments of the world woke up about uh, Camp, A Camp Ashram and what has been uh, occurring there and actually becomes, uh, starts to accept <laughs> the reality that if on the one hand they're willing to uh, argue the case for human rights, in, uh, rightly so in, in, in Libya, uh, in, in Tunisia, uh, in, in Egypt, in, in Syria, why, why, why are there continuous silence about what's happening in Iran? Where, public, where people are dragged out publicly and executed in the streets. What is happening in Iran is a shame on the democratic world. It is an absolute shame because we close our eyes and lower our heads in respect of what's happening in Iran. And it's not right. It is not right if we stand for the forces of the democratic process of our world that we should turn away from people. And we turn in a way simply because of, 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 of things like oil and of gas. It's about time that the government of Britain went farther and actually recognized the resistance in uh, opposition as a legitimate uh, government in waiting in, in Europe. Iran has a formidable and organized opposition movement. In fact, and I think many government officials would at least agree privately with me on this, the Iranian resistance is the largest and most organized opposition movement uh, in comparison to all other opposition movements around the world. Yeah, yeah. So why is it that we continue to put our hope uh, in somehow reaching an impossible deal with the Mullahs? Why does our government allow the appalling abuses to take place in Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty in a country that we helped liberate? Um, I want in, to in particular condemn the scandalous actions of the UN envoy, uh, Martin Kobler, who has uh, been exposed as a liar, a charlatan in his treatment of the Ashraf and R Liberty residents. The, UN role, the UN's role on the situation of Ashraf and Liberty residents has been disgraceful and I urge the Secretary General to appoint a replacement. And in particular, I want to urge my government to pr uh, press the UNHCR to give collective refugee status to all the residents in, uh, in Liberty, or else support their return to Camp Ashraf and the lifting of all restrictions against them.